Thank you all for coming. We're uh, in a bit of a rush. We've got another vote coming up in about five minutes, and uh, I want to make sure that Senator Ernst from Iowa can speak. There's no more eloquent, sincere, and persuasive voice on pro-life issues than Joni Ernst. And the purpose of this news conference is to unveil the Senate's efforts to pass the pain-capable Unborn Child Protection Act that passed in the House, and uh, Joni has been a co-sponsor since day one. And I'll turn it over to her. Thank you. And f first, I, I want to thank Senator Graham for being such a great partner in this. Thank you so much. And I, I can't say that I am the most eloquent speaker, but I am maybe one of the most passionate when it, when it comes to these life issues. We know that at five months of gestational age, babies have 10 fingers, they have 10 toes, they can make faces, they can yawn, and we also know that they feel pain. It's unconscionable that the United States is one of only seven countries that allows abortions after five months. We are currently in the company of countries like China and North Korea not good company in, in many ways. I'm fighting for this legislation in honor of my friend, my very small friend and fellow Iowa, Iowan, Micah Pickering. Micah, at five years old now, is an incredible young boy who was born prematurely at just five months gestation. And I've had the honor of knowing Micah for many years now. And before I had given a, a speech on the floor of the Senate, I had a poster board that had a picture of Micah at birth, this tiny baby. And I had a side-by-side -side picture of him um, at his, his then age of several years old climbing a tree. And as I had that in my office, Micah ran up to it and he pointed at the picture of himself as that tiny little baby. And he said, baby. And I said, yes, Micah, that's a baby. And so we know that these incredible young babies, even though that they're born or are living at that age, they can feel pain. And we know that they are babies. It demonstrates that they are babies. This legislation can protect up to 10,000 lives like Micah's every year by preventing abortions after about five months of development. And it is absolutely critical that the Senate take up this legislation to protect our most vulnerable in our population. So again, I want to thank you, Lindsay, so much. And for all of our partners that have joined together on this incredibly important legislation, we must take this up on the floor of the Senate. We must do it to honor um, all of those little, little precious lives. So thank you all very much. Um, God bless, and, and hopefully we will see this through to fruition and a vote on the floor of the Senate. Thank you, Lindsay. Thank you very, very much. I appreciate it. I know you're busy. Thank you for coming by. Uh, we'll have Senator Sass and Lankford come in a moment, and we'll introduce our group, our leaders of the groups behind us. But sort of put this bill in context. What we're trying to accomplish here is to get America out of a club of seven nations that I particularly don't want to be in. So when you look at medical literature about the development of a child in the fifth month, they encourage young parents to sing to the unborn child because they can recognize your voice. And the theory of the case here is pretty important. Under Roe v. Wade, uh, there's a state interest when the, uh, uh, the fetus becomes viable. And viability has definitely changed since 1973. But there's a new theory here, a legal theory to protect the unborn that's very, very important. The construct of this bill is that at 20 weeks, the child is capable of feeling excruciating pain. Operations are routinely uh, performed on, un on unborn children at 20 weeks. And the, the medical practice, the, the standard medical practice, is to provide anesthesia to the unborn child because they feel pain in the process of trying to save the child's life. So it's not much of a leap to say that an abortion would be a very painful thing for that child to go through. So we're trying to convince the courts 
that legislative bodies like the Congress and at the state level have a legitimate, compelling state interest to protect a, a child at the fifth month of development from excruciating pain that would come from an abortion. Again, if the medical requirements are that you an provide anesthesia to save the child's life, that says a lot about the development of that child. So I'm excited that the courts are going to embrace this as a l legitimate, compelling state interest. Twenty states have passed a version of this law, including South Carolina. It passed the House yesterday with a very strong vote. We're going to take it up in the Senate. I can assure every pro-life group out there this will be on the floor of the Senate sooner rather than later, a debate worthy of a great nation. And when it comes to the unborn, one of the strongest advocates you could hope to have is Senator Lankford, and we'll turn it over to him. Thanks, Lindsay. Bill, thanks for being here. This is a very straightforward bill, and I try to tell everyone what it is and what it is not. This is an opportunity for us to be able to basically catch up for the rest of the world where the rest of the world has already gone, recognizing that a child at the fifth month of development is a viable child. When you look across Europe, Europe has already changed their laws. Uh, with the exception of the Netherlands, and they're the only ones that have not, have, they do not allow elective abortions after the fifth month. We are behind most of the world. We're in an elite club of nations uh, like North Korea and China uh, that still allow abortions uh, this late uh, in, their, in their development. So we need to be able to fix our laws. Uh, again, the rest of the world is already at this spot. We're lagging behind uh, in what we're doing to protect th that child at this stage of development. The other part of it is also an area that we're lagging behind the rest of the world. This bill also corrects an issue that occasionally there's an abortion where it is botched. And instead of actually destroying the child in the womb, the child is fully delivered. And when the child is fully delivered, a decision has to be made. What do you do now with this child? Medical professionals literally surround this child that's now fully delivered. This bill would say if a child is fully developed or fully delivered, then they need to get medical attention to try to protect their life. This is no longer a child in the womb that we're arguing about. This is a child who's been delivered. We think that's basic humanity. There's, at times there's an argument about is a child a child if it's in the womb, but there's never been a debate if a child is a child outside the womb. This tries to be able to correct that issue. It's rare, but it does occasionally happen, and we believe that is an area that we in just basic humanity should be able to address. Again, this is not trying to be divisive. This is trying to say these are common sense issues that the rest of the world has already settled that we need to be able to resolve in our law as well. And I look forward to this, not just passing the House, but passing the Senate, and for us to be able to catch up with the rest of the world and to be able to speak to our children about the days past when we used to have children at six, seven months of viability uh, that are actually, that were killed in the womb, uh, that this actually protects those life in the days ahead. So thank you for allowing me to be a part of this conversation. This is a fight that is worthy of having, and it is a debate that we should have as a nation, and I think where most Americans already are.